Hey, welcome to episode 83 of the Is That Normal podcast, and happy 2022. Yes, unbelievable. You know, I continue to both realize that I'm old and that I feel like we're living in sci-fi times. Yeah. Because these, these are just unbelievable numbers, and yes. here we are, another year. When we were kids, like, tw- the 2020s seem like... Oh, so far in the future, it was Light never going to happen. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But here we are, 2022. And I'm super excited, not just because I'm a sci-fi nerd, but because <laughs> I think that there are some just great things ahead of us yeah. this year. Uh, you know, Lots of struggle <laughs> in the last few years. But man, I just see a lot of hopeful things coming. Uh, a lot of good questions getting asked. And I'm looking forward to another year of, uh, of trying to help people figure out what it means to follow Jesus and to lead their families and their children in that. So, But anytime you enter a new year, there's always this question of you know, resolutions, like yeah. what I want in this year. So Randall, do you have some New Year's resolutions? Uh, yeah, a couple. I want to I want to I, I read more books this year. That's, yeah. that's always one of the things that sometimes gets back shelved for me. Um, that was almost a pun, but... <laughs> Um, <laughs> we should I, do an episode about dad jokes. We should. Oh yeah, man, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, ready. It'd be good. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Um, but I want to. I want to continue to work on the beard this this That's year. That's a good resolution. So I support I, that I'm, decision. I'm working on like by into 2022. I want to have like a sweet yeah. beard. Like, yeah, that you know. That's so, good. Um, but yeah, that and then just really, honestly, I want to take. Take it, be able to take a step back. We were actually just talking about this of just, uh, you know, sometimes we overschedule our lives yes. and and being wow. able to to make make time for the things that we need to make time for and not not let busyness or a checklist of things we got to get done override relationships and those opportunities that sometimes I know I miss because I'm too focused on what I got to get done. Yeah, man, this is funny because we didn't really talk about this beforehand, uh, but what ours were going to be, but but some similar things. You know, so one for me is, is I do want to exercise some more this mm-hmm. year than than I have been. I've been exercising regularly, but I'd like to increase that a little bit this year. Uh, also, want to work on my time and priorities, and one of my big goals in that is, like you said, is, is I want to make sure I don't over... Um, plan my year especially i've got some transitions going in leadership at the yeah. church and i don't want to uh i want to do that in a healthy way that continues to create rhythm and breath and time for reflection and all those yeah. things so that's that's a goal uh and then i want to read more books than i did last year uh, i'm you know not just because i enjoy reading but because it helps us grow and learn and get yeah. different perspectives so anyway yeah so some similar things yeah. there so you didn't mention your beard but no, no, I did not. Yes. <laughs> Other than that. Other than that, we have some similarities. Yeah. So, But now, as for our podcast, though, and, and what we're doing here, you know, we also have some goals and some resolutions that we want to share with you for 2022. So as Mark mentioned b- before our intro um we have some resolutions here for the podcast and and one of those things is that we just want to continue to every other week provide a new podcast new content and and some some supplemental content you know on social media and and through all of our channels Uh, in between that that really provides tools hopefully for parents um as as they navigate trying to raise kids and in today's world in a, in a in a godly way and so we want to do that and then um we want to have some more guests we've, yes. we've had some great guests on yes, here in the have. past and mm-hmm. and it's been been a little while since we've had had them some regularly so we want to have some more guests we've got some yep. ideas already yep. uh brewing for for this year with that and um, we just want to continue providing great ideas and resources for parents of teens and young adults yeah and, and you know to do that we're going to need those parents to help us you know you you are listeners we 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 want to be in this together we're, we're not just a one-way street we want uh, conversation and communication we want to hear what what some of your needs are what what problems and challenges you are facing and your family is facing right now uh, so to do that over the next couple of weeks we're going to ask you to do something for us we're going to ask you to fill out a survey uh, there will be a link in the uh, in the notes page here uh, for our episode or you can get that on our website is that normal.org or on our uh, social media at our facebook page or our instagram 
uh, page. And so, so you can find that survey and, and fill it out. It should just take like 15 minutes or so, just a, a few questions, some multiple choice, some short answer things, and, and to just give us some ideas on what uh, what things you need from us as we try to help you uh, navigate parenting in today's culture. Yeah, because yeah, because we've said this many times before. We we want this to be a conversation. We want this to be interactive, and mm-hmm. you know we don't we don't just want to be sitting here talking to a camera with with no one on the other end. That's right. You know, with, with anything that's relevant, and so yeah. um, we need your help to do that. And so really, we just strongly encourage you just to take a few minutes out of time and. Check out this survey and, and let us know, you know, there's opportunities in there to tell us maybe some, some things that, that have been helpful or that you've you found um, beneficial that we've we've done and maybe we need to do more of. Yeah. Um, some things that maybe things we've talked about that you'd like to know more information about mm-hmm. um, or, or maybe some things that maybe we just haven't, haven't hit on that, that you say, hey, this is something I really want to know more about or this is something that you know, is a struggle for me as a parent, things that maybe we just haven't hit on yet. Yeah. Um, so it'll be good, good feedback for us. And, you know, like I said, we want to, we want to tailor this to what's going to be most beneficial and effective for, for you. And so, so if you would just, we would really imp- appreciate just taking a couple of minutes to, to fill that out and, and help us be able to tailor this to what's going to be most effective. Yeah. And so, um, you know, and you can continue, people can continue to connect with that past this, but, but for the, by the first week of February, all the responses we get by the first week week of February, we're going to compile those and we're going to talk about that in an episode that will come out in mid-February. And then hopefully throughout the year, we'll see some episodes that are fueled by some of the responses that we're going uh, to get with this. So we hope that as we do that, we're going to find some great resources to help us all raise our kids to follow Jesus better. Yeah. So so as we talk about that, Mark, what, what have maybe share with us, what have been some of the areas where you've sought some additional advice and resources in raising your own family um maybe especially as your kids have gotten you know later into their teen years and and now you've got kids that are into a you know adulthood yeah yeah so you know probably the number one all all the way through the number one biggest like man this is always on my mind area is the spiritual development of my kids you know that has been just something that we're so passionate about concerned about sometimes pulling our hair out about kind of a thing is you know we we really want to see our kids come to know jesus love jesus accept jesus as their savior and learn how to follow him with their life and that has been uh just a foundational uh overarching thing for for all of us and and i'm sure any parents out there that are uh followers of jesus that that's for you too like the the biggest concern and thing for you is that your kids you know accept Jesus get saved and and, mm-hmm. and all of those things and we're thankful so far you know all of our kids have made that decision and yeah. and, and are are making steps towards making that a lifestyle and so so but you know but there's ups and downs in that and yeah. and so so we've really you know that's a constant prayer that's a daily prayer for my kids is uh, continued to be that they would uh, learn how to own their faith, that they learn how to apply their faith, that uh, their faith would inform uh, their decisions, and uh, and that they'd find the peace and the purpose and the direction that only comes from following Jesus. So, yeah. man, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So what are some of the things that, that have helped you the most in, in that area? Yeah, um, you know, prioritizing family <laughs> devotions has probably been the best thing. Uh, the, uh, you know, it's something that uh, while, while we've not hit a, about at a thousand on this, you know, we've tried to uh, multiple times a week, if not every day, to sit down with our kids at a routine time. For us, it's breakfast time and read the Bible together and talk about it and talk about things that are going on in our life. And like I said, sometimes it's been more structured and less structured. Sometimes it's longer and shorter and sometimes it's more frequent than, than, than not. But, but, uh, but we've tried to be consistent through that. And that has really helped our kids, I think, make a habit of learning how to have a conversation about about the Bible and faith in their life. And, yeah. and so that's been huge for us. Um, and so so we, you know, we've tried to really find good resources to help us with that. And we've shared a lot of that on, on the podcast, you know, uh, using new version Bible reading plans, uh, you know, reading plans together, reading books together. And so, you know, a lot of books that we've shared on this podcast, you know, were test ran uh, through through our family devotions yeah. and with our kids. And so that's been really, really helpful. Uh, so again, we hope to continue to find good resources like that to help, help each other do that better. And then 
the the next thing so the third thing is is plugging into a local church and yeah. being involved and our kids have watched us make the sacrifice that it takes to be consistent and connected and involved in a church and mm -hmm. but they've also seen the benefits of yeah. that and uh and, and so so that's about routine but it's also given them opportunities to serve and you know all of my kids serve and they all do different things but they all serve at our church and as they've grown to yeah. adulthood they've continued to to be committed and desire to do that and they've also it's allowed them to have other healthy adults in their life who have a voice in their life and i mean i can't tell you how many times you're we're one of those people that um have been able to tell my kids things and help my kids with things that they weren't listening to me <laughs> about at the time and give them you know they'll come home and say did you know that so-and-so said this i'm like I've told you that 4,000 <laughs> times and you've never heard it, but they said it once, yeah. but, but I'm thankful for that. That's, yeah. that's been such a huge blessing as well. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. So in addition to maybe spiritual development, what are some other areas of concern? Maybe some that you didn't expect. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I didn't expect this early on. I mean, I think anyone who's watching what's going on with our culture and with young people today now would see this, uh, but, but mental health has been a big mm -hmm. deal. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we've all heard the last few years, you know, the epidemic levels of anxiety and depression. And, you know, I've talked a little bit about it. We're going to re review it sometime this year. But, you know, as Fuller Seminary has done research, the number one question that young people are asking is, what do I do with my anxiety? Yeah. Like that's the the most frequently asked question with young people today. And um, and we've had personal experiences with that. And, you know, we've had um, some in our household who who have had significant issues with that enough so that we've had to seek um, you know, professional advice and help. And, um, you know, and that's, that, that can be a struggle. Uh, and there's even like a, uh, oh, I failed as a parent barrier yeah. to get over. But the reality is, is it's real. Mm -hmm. We can't ignore it and we better get the right help for our kids. And, you know, thankfully we've watched some of our kids who had some of the most significant struggles with that, uh, find the right help, find some deliverance from that and, and be on a path towards health, uh, which wouldn't maybe have happened if we hadn't sought help and resources yeah. outside of ourselves. And, and, and that was, mm -hmm. mental health has been something that's been on a kind of an upward trend of, of just a growing concern, especially in youth, yeah. adolescents um, for, for years. And then, you know, you compile 2020 and 2021 on top of that. And I think it's just continuing to... Um, make that a bigger and bigger issue yeah. that that nearly probably every family is going to have to address at some in some way shape or form yeah so we've got to deal with it we've got to talk about it and we've got to have our eyes open i yeah. definitely think um another issue is is social justice which is kind of this buzzword kind of thing but but the way i see it play out with uh with my kids particularly at my house is as they've gotten older um, and, and they've become socially aware and involved with the news and particularly my kids who are in college, you know, they're coming home and they're talking about things they're hearing about what's going on with racial tension and with, uh, gender issues and, uh, ethnicity and bullying. And I mean, and, and these are like big, big topics and mm -hmm. they have lots of questions about them. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, trying to figure out, so how, how do I reconcile the things I'm hearing in society and the things you know, we see in our town and the things that I'm reading from the Bible and, you know, where does this all meet and what's our yeah. response supposed to be? And so, um, you know, we've had a lot of good discussions and, you know, uh, you know, I as a parent have had to both been really avid researching and trying to pursue prayerfully what what scripture really does say about issues, mm, not yeah. what we think it says, but what it really says, as well as understanding the issues. You know, I had a big, long conversation with my daughter who's in college about critical race theory the other day. I was thankful I'd been doing some reading to understand yeah. where she was coming from and identify that that's what she was talking about even yeah. when she started asking these questions so we could unpack all this and talk about it. But it's, boy, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And it's like, um, I think we've said, it's like, you know, tight walk, tightrope walking over a pit of alligators while juggling <laughs> chainsaws. I mean, so it's, yeah. you know, it's some really delicate stuff. Yeah. And, and <laughs> as much as maybe we would like to, you know, pull in, pull in the blanket over our heads and, and <laughs> hoping that it goes away or that our kids don't ask about it or that they're not exposed to it is not going to no. be the right answer. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> uh, and then one more big issue has been purpose and direction. Um, we were talking just the other day, Shannon and I were about, you know, what we thought like our middle two kids, like what their, 
you know, where they're going to go to college and what their, you know, what career path they're going to choose. And I just mentioned that my older two kids, when they were those ages, what they're doing now has nothing to do with the things that they were saying when they were at that age Mm -hmm. that my middle two are now. And, you know, it just, there's a lot of change and a lot of flow Mm -hmm. and a lot of questions. And, and, you know, we've just seen both, uh, again, trying to read and get a lot of good advice and voices of other people who are going through similar things has helped us uh, realizing, particularly what I've seen is for young men, it's taking them a little while. And so like my son took a gap year between high school and college and, you know, people kind of, that's a little scary, you know, like, are they just going to live in a basement and eat chips and play video games (laughs) and, you know, but, but it's just takes, it's taking them a little bit of time to dial in what direction to go. And so just try and navigate all that and have the right patience to do that. It's been, uh, it's been a journey. Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, we've kind of addressed that in in some of our previous episodes, as far as just kind of a little bit of how the, the delayed, you know, how the, the age of, of figuring all of those things out and and kind of moving into adulthood, so to speak, has shifted over the the last several years and, and maybe some of the reasons why why that has happened and continues yeah, I was to just happen. rereading in the book Growing Young, which Fuller Seminary uh, wrote this this week, is that they have an earlier starting point and a later finishing point in their development. That, mm-hmm. That's what they're seeing culturally. Yeah. And uh, and so, yeah, so that creates all sorts of challenges. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so so how have you navigated some of those, those issues? Top number one <laughs> thing is to pray and to pray very intentionally. Uh, pray intentionally for yourself to have the heart and the energy and the wisdom to know what to do. Pray for your kids, uh, for their hearts to be open to truth and to uh, to have their eyes open to direction. Um, and pray for strength and patience and all the things it's going to take. So prayer, daily prayer, yeah, lots and lots of prayer. Uh, that's that's number one. I think also have an open dialogue. Uh, as my kids of age, you know, again we're talking about teens, late teens, uh, young adults, you know being willing to have those hard conversations and not just run in there and say what you think, but try to hear what they're saying and yeah. trying to be, you know, willing to research some things and talk through some things. And so open dialogue has been key. I'm so thankful that my uh, kids all, and even as they've gotten older, they continue to come and want to sit at the table and talk through what's going on in their life. Mm-hmm. And that's been because we've made that a habit. Yeah. Um, Connecting them to good resources. You know, I'm always pushing, like, you should listen to this podcast. You should read this book. You should, you know, what are you reading in the Bible? Like, we're always, you know, trying to help them find mm-hmm. resources and apply it. Uh, it'd be better for them to discover it themselves than me to tell them. And so yeah. try to help them do that. Patience. <laughs> no fun. <laughs> but it just takes time. Yeah. You know, we, we were talking again about the development of our kids and, you know, some of the issues that we saw... You know, when our oldest son was 13, you know, we didn't really see a lot of glimmers of progress until 19. That's six years. That's, that's a lot of, Mm -hmm. that's a lot of time, you know, so, but, but man, things are going awesome. Yeah. And, you know, there's still growth to be had, but, you know, it just takes time and be patient and hang in there. I think that's big. Um, And then one last thing is empathy. So that's a, that's a a big thing when we're talking about our kids. And and oddly enough, we're, we're Mm going to be talking about uh, empathy in our next episode and kind of unpack that a little bit more but but quickly though why is empathy important empathy is our ability to put others first and you know if you'll notice like almost all of the things that we've uh, talked about even in these issues it all boils down to relationships our relationship our relationship to our kids our kids relationship to us our our, our relationship to the world and ultimately our relationship with god and so you know in, in empathy is is a great tool to help build healthy relationships. So looking forward to to, to talking about that next week or ne- next episode in a couple weeks and uh, and yeah. unpacking that for everybody. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm-hmm. So our two takeaways for this week is the first is to check out the survey and and fill that out for us. Let us know. Um, give us your feedback. Let us know so we can so we can help make this um, the the best podcast that it can be and the most effective for for you. And then the second is just to join us in two weeks as we talk about empathy. Be abnormal. abnormal.